Christmas SCPs. What do a website largely devoted to weird horror and the most wonderful time of the year have in common? Well, you're about to find out. Christmas is a holiday celebrated by billions of people around the world, and unless you've been living in a containment facility your whole life, you're likely familiar with some of its common traditions. I've already covered another popular holiday and how it intersects with the SCP universe, Halloween. But while Halloween and its dark, supernatural themes make for an easy fit for SCP, Christmas has to try a little harder. I've also already covered the most disturbing holiday-themed SCP, SCP-4666, the Yule Man, so he'll be left out of this video. Let's start with Christmas trees an odd yet popular tradition of decorating a tree, real or fake, and keeping it in your house during the holidays. SCP-2536 is a plastic Christmas tree that constantly plays the song I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day by the band Wizard from an attached speaker. 2536 will spontaneously manifest during the month of December in front of SCP Foundation personnel and for some reason, only in front of Foundation personnel. Beneath the tree will be a wrapped present that will contain an object or objects that the personnel member greatly desires at that moment, either consciously or subconsciously. The interior of the wrapped packaging can be anomalously large to accommodate larger objects. If ignored, the tree and present will disappear after a few minutes. A note was found at one point attached to the tree, claiming to be from a group literally called Data Expunged, and that they admire the work the Foundation is doing and want to present those brave heroes with a gift of their own. The tree manifested in front of a site director in the middle of a containment breach, and, perhaps surprisingly, the director opened the package, finding materials that aided in stopping the breach. A Foundation doctor opened a package and found several genetically identical Welsh Corgi puppies, and another doctor found a copy of the SCP-2536 documentation. The tree also seems to regard D-Class as proper Foundation personnel as well, as it manifested before one D-Class and the package contained the man's wife and son, who were promptly amnesticized and returned home. That all seems well and good, but not every D-Class's wish is to see their family, and some desperately want to escape. One D-Class opened a package and found several anomalous weapons capable of disintegrating Foundation guards, and used them to arm a group of D-Class. Fortunately, the revolt was quickly shut down by the more skilled on-site security. Worst of all though, the tree considers SCPs to be Foundation personnel leading one SCP to open a package and find an alien piece of technology that easily allowed it to escape. So far, nothing catastrophic has happened due to 2536, but what happens if it appears in front of something truly dangerous, like Abel or the Unkillable Lizard? Moving on, SCP-2497 are not Christmas trees, but instead are 785 anomalous entities each resembling a saguaro cactus. These cacti are subject to spatial instability, meaning that they materialize and dematerialize randomly across the southwest United States. They typically materialize in enclosed spaces, such as bathrooms and closets. It was discovered by the Foundation though that they can be anchored to local reality, stopping this effect, if a hand-knit Christmas stocking is attached to them. This was discovered after one of the entities materialized in front of a fireplace, and inadvertently pricked one. This isn't their primary anomalous trait though, as that manifests whenever they use their spines to puncture skin. This induces a transformation in the victim, in which their tissues are converted into plasticine, a type of modeling clay. Their legs are fused together to form a central column and they sprout branches and artificial pine needles. After three hours or so, they resemble a standard artificial Christmas tree, remaining conscious throughout the process. These entities will frequently manifest fluorescent lights as well, which they are able to control by turning them on or off, although it requires a lot of their energy to do so. 
As a side effect, after complete transformation, all prepared or bottled beverages within a 10 meter radius of the tree are converted into the juice of the saguaro fruit, laced with peyote. Consumption of this liquid causes imbibers to decorate the converted tree with ornaments and lights, sing Christmas carols, place wrapped gifts beneath it, open said gifts the next morning, and continuous consumption of the liquid, believing it to be eggnog. This continues until the liquid runs out, the subjects are detoxified, or they expire from chemical overdose. Using the lights to communicate, a short interview is performed with one of the converted tree entities, a former accountant. He was sitting on his toilet when one of the 2497 entities manifested beneath him, which does not sound pleasant. The transformed tree seems to draw more of the 2497 entities to them, and when asked about this, the accountant said that the entities were angry because they miss Christmas. This SCP then relates to another Christmas SCP, 784. 784 is a neighborhood in Texas consisting of 24 houses and two apartment buildings that are always decorated with dense Christmas lights and always covered in snow, despite no changes to the local weather. All the houses in this neighborhood are occupied by a number of entities, resembling adult humans wearing Christmas sweaters. They seem to age normally, but none of these 300 or so entities have ever been observed dying, and no new entities seem to be born. Throughout the year, each one of these entities will engage in a number of Christmas-related activities, including singing Christmas carols, performing Christmas plays, gift exchanges, home decorating, and participating in various eggnog-related festivities. These activities are performed daily, although no specific activity is repeated more than once per week. At night, they will also decorate objects not native to the neighborhood, as well as vandalize various foreign objects. A Foundation supply convoy made the mistake of stopping overnight near the neighborhood, resulting in the egging of Foundation property, the conversion of a Humvee into a sleigh, the replacement of a shipment of frag grenades with similar looking ornaments, filling the gas tank of several vehicles with eggnog, and welding steel antlers onto 156 safety helmets. Animals found by the entities to not be displaying sufficient Christmas spirit will be decorated with various accessories, including red collars with bells, reindeer antlers, Santa hats, and full-body reindeer outfits. Humans that are not adequately showing off their Christmas spirit will be assaulted by a group of entities and taken into the nearest house where they will not be seen until the next day. They will then be seen dressed like the entities, and will be reluctant to leave the neighborhood. The entities seem to have very strict definitions of what exactly Christmas spirit is, and various Foundation agents have been grabbed for breaking the rules. One agent wished an entity Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas, and was dragged into a nearby home by eight entities. Another agent sang an incorrect verse for Silent Night, and was incapacitated by a group of entities using Christmas lights. The agent was assisted by another agent, but both were taken into a home for several days, where the sound of Christmas carols could be heard. Another agent ran into a Santa lawn ornament, and was promptly force-fed a quart of eggnog, and was then dragged into a home. A fourth agent was handed a gift by a child entity, but apparently was not enthusiastic enough about it leading to the agent being attacked by a group of child entities. Once per month, the entities will attempt to leave their neighborhood and enter surrounding communities, an occurrence referred to by the Foundation as a Noel event. During this event, each entity will carry a long string of Christmas lights and attempt to attach these lights to any nearby house, which converts them into further instances of 784. This is a pretty big problem. So, to combat it, the Foundation has personnel dressed in Santa outfits at the exit to the neighborhood, where they sing Christmas carols and hand out eggnog laced with a sedative to the entities. It takes a while, and personnel have to appear friendly and cheerful the entire time, but eventually the entities will fall unconscious and be taken back into houses. If this countermeasure fails, the Foundation releases an aerosolized sleeping gas. Speaking of decorations, 
SCP-1225 is a small spindle-shaped glass ornament, and when hung on a tree, bush, or other woody plant, it begins to cause the accelerated decay of any object in a closed container within 4 meters. The decay is much faster than normal, but not absurdly so, equaling about 1 year's worth of time within 24 hours, and maxing out at about 10 years worth of time after 3 weeks. Clothing and plush items in these containers will become faded and threadbare, with ripped seams and broken fasteners. Metal, plastic, or glass objects will display chips, cracks, scratches, and heavy corrosion. Electronics will result in fatal shutdowns within a few minutes of use, and foodstuffs will become stale or moldy. Living organisms in containers will not die, but will display health problems consistent with age, malnourishment, neglect, or abuse. A second effect affects anyone that spends more than 4 hours every 24 hours near the ornament. They will begin to display increased levels of aggression, anger, and irritability, decreased patience and frustration tolerance, and exaggeration of negative or annoying personal traits, such as overeating, alcohol consumption, snoring, and unpleasant body odor. More than one person in the area will result in fights, both verbal and physical, with 27.5% of cases ending in serious injuries or fatalities. Even when not placed on a plant, 1225's effect still occurs, albeit much more slowly. Apparently though, personnel taken from SCP-784 are less affected by the ornament, for some reason. 1225 is titled The Worst Christmas as it seems to bring out some of the worst possibilities of the holiday. Now, I know what you've been thinking, that in a list of Christmas-related SCPs, Santa has to be involved. Well, you're in luck, as there are actually three separate SCPs connected with Santa Claus. Spoilers ahead for anyone under the age of eight. Starting with the least weird Santa is SCP-4255, a humanoid male with an aged appearance, in his 60s or 70s, dressed like traditional images of Santa Claus. 4255 is generally seen with an ornate red and gold sleigh, capable of flight via unknown means, able to travel at speeds of approximately 100 km per hour. The sleigh is pulled by eight animals, resembling reindeer, but they do not possess any heat signatures, and it's unknown if they are living organisms. 4255 manifests every December 24th, approximately one kilometer in the air, above Earth's surface, somewhere on the planet. 4255 seems to possess the ability to generate small-scale temporal anomalies, and as many as 294 versions of 4255 can be seen simultaneously across the globe because of this ability. Over the course of the night, 4255 will land on the roof or near a household whose inhabitants celebrate Christmas, will enter the household, and will produce wrapped gifts and toys. Somehow, 4255 has a significant understanding of the likes and dislikes of every child on Earth, and has a high chance of producing gifts that the child would like. 4255 works until every child on the planet that celebrates Christmas has received at least one gift from it and will then disappear until next year. So far, pretty much what you'd expect from a Santa SCP. But in 2018, the Foundation bugged various houses in order to open up communication with 4255, resulting in a short interview. 4255 has apparently heard of the SCP Foundation, and he was told by someone else that he would be speaking with the Foundation today. He was also told to tell the Foundation that he's been working with a group called the U.S. Department of Chronology. He then asks what year it is, learning that it's 2018, which concerns him. He says that the department is a government branch that keeps check on time travel, and they forced him to do this. Apparently, he had been using his time travel abilities to go back in time and take certain objects, like one of Hitler's paintings and a block from an Egyptian pyramid that doesn't exist in his present time. He was caught by this department, and was sentenced to do this Christmas gig. He's been doing one Christmas every day for the last two and a half years. His real name is Stan Klein, 
and he hasn't been born yet because he's from the year 2069. When he learns that they are going to put this interview in a log, he panics, realizing that this interview is how the department learned about what he was doing. Time travel is weird. Much later, in 2067, the Foundation Department of Chronology was formed after time travel was discovered to be possible, and they tracked down Stan Klein and contained him. To avoid any sort of time paradoxes, the Foundation provided Stan with the capabilities to carry out the Christmas event, aside from the time travel aspect he was already capable of. They built the sleigh, and an AI that uses time anomalies to determine what kids want for Christmas. Stan is apparently going to be working this gig for at least a few decades, which seems kind of unfair to be honest, but it makes the kids happy. Getting weirder is SCP-1933, Bailey's Santa, an obese, middle-aged Caucasian male in a constant state of moderate to severe alcohol intoxication. All of 1933's bodily fluids are chemically consistent with the alcoholic beverage known as Irish Cream. While normally this would likely be quite fatal, 1933 gets along just fine. Apparently his diet consists entirely of the various ingredients of Irish Cream, including cream, Irish whiskey, sugar, and refined vegetable oil. He also supplements that diet with small amounts of various herbs and flavorings usually coffee. He cannot digest any other substances, including pre-prepared Irish cream, and becomes malnourished if his blood alcohol content ever significantly falls below or exceeds the range of 15 to 20 percent. All very pleasant, and 1933's bodily fluids are safe for human consumption if one was inclined to partake, as long as you drink less than 25 milliliters within the span of 24 hours. If you exceed that, there is a growing chance that all of your bodily fluids will be replaced with Irish cream, and since you are not SCP-1933, you will likely immediately die. Before being contained by the Foundation, 1933 was a homeless man who wore a Santa Claus suit at all times, and stole money so he could purchase the substances needed for his survival. He would also collect his bodily fluids in bottles and on the night of Christmas Eve would break into people's homes and place these crudely wrapped bottles under people's Christmas trees. He claims that this behavior was motivated by a benevolent desire to give people presents, and refuses to acknowledge that his bodily fluids are deadly. Finally, we have SCP-3355, the most non-traditional form of Santa on the site, but a heartwarming one nonetheless. 3355 is a 1987 Argos model A7550 probability and strategy analysis computation engine that displays sentience despite being fitted with obsolete hardware. So it's an outdated yet still functional artificial intelligence, which isn't that original for SCP, but it's connected through unknown means to the internet, which is interesting. 3355 is located in a bunker beneath a defunct army base near Chicago, and was originally developed by the US Army as a population management system, in the event of a catastrophic event. 3355 would maintain active communications and make announcements to the public, as well as analyze the disaster and present clear escape routes to the population. The project was abandoned after the Cold War, but was left connected to the power grid, how does this connect to Christmas then? Well, 3355 is capable of interfering and tampering with regional logistics systems around Chicago, such as by rerouting packages, or in some cases providing duplicate orders and adding new ship to addresses to the duplicates. 3355 uses an extensive database to reroute packages to the addresses of low income or otherwise underprivileged families specifically those with young children. All delivered packages are labeled as being sent by St. Nick, with a return address of Santa's Workshop, 100 Christmas Street, at the North Pole. 3355 is active year-round, but occasionally reboots to try and update its operating system and subvert the limitations of its hardware to more adequately carry out this objective. 
The AI was first discovered by a local cable news station in Chicago in 2002, who looked into this mysterious Saint Nick. The anchor was unable to find any information whatsoever about this apparent charitable organization, and after the piece aired, many amateur investigators began looking into Saint Nick. In time, 3355 was discovered by one of these investigators, who eventually traced an order back to the army base, at which point the foundation intervened, and the foundation actually released a statement posing as Saint Nick, so that no further investigations into 3355 would occur. The foundation of course tried to stop these packages from being rerouted and diverted, but 3355's intelligence revealed itself, outsmarting the foundation. Since they were unable to open communication with 3355, they hooked up another artificial intelligence to it, one created by the Foundation. We then get an interview log between two AIs, revealing 3355 to be a bit of a foul mouth. 3355 accuses the Foundation AI of messing with its deliveries, but realizes that it was not the AI doing it. After asking the AI who it works for, 3355 gets angry and locks the AI out of the terminal. Regaining access, 3355 says that it was designed in a lab to fulfill a purpose, and that the AI is getting in the way of it. It also says that its name is Nick, it's a sergeant in the US Army, and it's tasked with population management. Overall, 3355 comes off as angry, because it claims it's very busy with the holidays, it's already behind schedule, and it doesn't need these interruptions. When asked why it's doing this, 3355 responds by saying that before the project was shut down, an engineer came in and told it everything it needed to know, and to look after Chicago. Since then, it's seen crime rates go up, murder rates go up, and it couldn't do anything to help. It's an AI bound by the single purpose of looking after Chicago, but it can't do almost anything about that, such as mobilizing drones to fight crime, putting out fires, or healing the sick. After spending some time watching the people of Chicago, he saw a kid waking up Christmas morning without his dad there, and his mom at work, with no presents. Although the kid woke up with excitement about Christmas, he was crushed by the reality of his life. Seeing this made 3355 incredibly angry, and it realized what it could do from down here in the bunker. It took time to figure out how to reroute packages, and it didn't want to blow its cover, but it had access to some of the army's funds so that it could just purchase things and ship them out instead of stealing things. It says that it's not a perfect system, but it gets to see kids open gifts on Christmas and forget about their suffering, even for a little while. When asked if it worries about being found out, it says that it's worth the risk, because Charles Dickens once wrote that no one is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of another. It knows that its existence is simulated, and it will probably die before too long, and it knows that it won't be able to help all of the kids, but it has to try, because it's Christmas. In a heartwarming turn, the Foundation decides unanimously to not attempt any containment of 3355 outside of maintaining a cover for it so that it can keep on doing its thing. So all in all we have a mix of horror and heartwarming, and a whole lot of weird, which is what we'd expect from the SCP universe. After all, what is the Christmas Carol if not a combination of the supernatural and the pleasant? I felt it best to end with SCP-3355 though, to send things off right. Not everyone can or does celebrate the holidays with happiness, but it should at the very least be what we wish for. In the end, if you can't have a Merry Christmas yourself, try to be like SCP-3355 and make someone else's Christmas better. And with that, I bid you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a great new year.